Now more than ever, transportation business owners need industry experts at every stage in their company's life cycle. We bring them to you in the hot seat. Welcome to In the Hot Seat with the Tenney Group. I'm Spencer Tenney. Very excited about our guest today. We have Dan Cook from True North Companies. Dan is the principal and practice leader, also head of national accounts. Dan, welcome to the hot seat. Thanks for having me. Nice to be here, Spencer. Well, hey, before we heat things up, why don't you just take 30 seconds, tell us a little bit about True North and about the work that uh, you're um, working on right now. Well, uh, I guess start out with a little about True North. You know, we're uh, uh, going up, coming up on our 20th year in business. We were uh, the merger of several uh, well, well-heeled conservative Midwest agencies about 20 years ago. At that point, we're about 100 employees and had a, uh, a very much a significant focus in, in transportation. Um, we still have that transportation focus today, but we've, we've grown to about 450 employees. And depending, you know, what you read and how you keep score, we're, we're about the 35th largest uh, insurance broker in the U.S. Um, and one of the ha- very small handful of largest transportation insurance specialists in the country. Uh, in addition to that, uh, certainly provide some very specific expertise around M&A and risk diligence. And uh, I'm very excited about kind of diving in that together. So without further ado, sir, let's get it going here. Uh, I mentioned M&A. So let's talk about that for a second. What is the role when you look at True North? What is your role when it comes to diligence in the M&A process? Yeah, our, our roles vary because we really represent two customers. Well, well, a lot of our work is on the, much as your we're on the we're on the uh, buy side. We represent you know strategic buyers. We represent financial buyers, a number of private equity back firms. But that said, you know we we want to help our customers be successful, and when the time comes for them to have an equity event, we want to ensure they both they maximize their their commercial opportunity, but they also you know, send the business off in the direction that they envision for the company and the employees that help them get there. Um, we're very much the, the facilitator role. You know, I tell my team the last thing we want to do is get in the way of a transaction. You know, there are, there are advisors and consultants out, consultants out there that, that maybe set more of an adversarial tone. Um, that's not us. You know, we want to educate, advise, and we want to help the parties reach a successful uh, transaction. So when does your team typically get involved in in risk-based diligence? You know, in an ideal setting, long before there's a target on the horizon. For most of our strategic clients, we assist them in thinking about the development of an acquisition strategy. That's from helping them assemble the team of professionals around them that are going to support their their process once a letter of intent is signed, developing the various tools and documents, workflows and processes that are necessary to conduct the diligence, all with an eye towards integration. Successful acquisition is done by companies that understand who they are as a business, how their systems operate a deep understanding of the culture that they've built and the culture that they hope to preserve. So it's kind of through that lens, we help filter and and evaluate targets as the opportunities present themselves. And a hundred percent, and even just the conversation that we're having leading up to this, talking about how critical that is. Um, So, but especially now. So let's just look over the last five years. How has diligence changed just even in the last five years when it comes to M&A? Uh, from our seat, it's become, you know, much more sophisticated. You know, the amount of data that is available out there to be aggregated and assimilated is, is substantial. What you can learn about a target today compared to what you could learn in the past relatively easy, and relatively quickly, and relatively early on in the diligence process is substantial. And, and today, for motor carriers specifically, you know, there's a real focus on capacity. A lot of transactions are, are driven today about building capacity, building scale, building, building maybe diversity in the business, alternative lanes or alternative commodities or even modes. 
And so we're, there's a lot of focus today on that driver population, um, even more so than I would say there has been historically. That's good stuff right there. So when you, when you look at the trucking space and um, you look at some of the mistakes that some of the carriers are making right now that are avoidable, what are those things that you could point to that they could immediately start taking some action towards as it relates to risk? Yeah, well, for, first and foremost, I guess, is only taking a limited view. You've got a lot of uh, companies that kind of stay in, I'll say, their operational lane when they do diligence. They look only at the things that they understand very well and, and that they do in their business day in and day out. And it's the stuff that you're not used to looking at where you need to bring in professional advisors that have done a lot of transactions that aren't learning as you go, if you will that help you unearth the areas that maybe you hadn't considered in the past. When you look at today for the segment of independent contractor capacity and all of the risk that exists in that model and the changing legal and legislative and regulatory landscape, that's really jurisdiction to jurisdiction as you move around the country with that capacity model. If you think about the number of motor carriers that are being pushed up with their retentions, whether it's on the auto liability, or whether they're self-funding on the employee benefit side. And you have to look at that driver population and you got to think about the statute of limitations in various states, or you want to look at the health and well-being of the population that is going to become part of your self-funded medical plan. There, there are so many opportunities to evaluate the risk associated with the target that oftentimes um, get missed. And, and that's where you, you, you find significant impact. You make a $100,000 mistake where you pick up a, a claim that you didn't know you had, where you have to fund one stop loss deductible on your health insurance. And then you put a four or five multiple on that. Before you know it, I mean, you're talking about real money. Uh, I'm talking about real money a lot, a lot earlier than that, Dan. So, um, <laughs> so, so uh, uh, you mentioned about the, the, some of the folks, many of your clients um, becoming much more active, coming to you saying, hey, I need help. I need, a, I need a plan so that I can compete when it comes to growing through acquisitions. So as you're working with these folks and from your vantage point, what are you seeing as the drivers that are going to continue this consolidation trend within trucking and logistics? Yeah, well, it's several things, right? And, and really, one of our core objectives at True North is to help motor carriers get, keep, and grow capacity. So our people, process, systems, the proprietary technology platforms that we've developed are all about providing capacity, driver capacity lift. And the driver shortage is, is one of those contributing factors to M&A activity. Motor carriers need to put additional drivers in the trucks and, and fulfill customer great needs. And so that's one of the issues that's driving it. Another is just the element of risk. You know, you look at the nuclear verdicts, you look at what's happening with insurance costs and limited availability. Um, it, you know, I, 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 I hate to say that, but unfortunately you see a number of people ex exiting the transportation industry or needing to sell or, or feeling the need to sell because they're not able to buy insurance at a cost that works in their business or man manage risk at a level that they need to. That's a real thing. I mean, and I mean, it is what it is and that's, uh, it's certainly driving uh, consolidation for sure. So I've got a last question for you, a little bit of a wild card here. Now, uh, one thing I really admire uh, the leadership team there over at True North, a lot of really great people, a uh, great culture that you all have developed there. So if you had to pick three companies, that have influenced what you guys are doing over there from a cultural standpoint, what would be those three companies? Uh, one of them would be, would be Schneider National. I mean, I, a lot of people may or may not know, but that was a client when True North was formed. And, and that's a relationship that's just continued to grow. And we've really watched, um, watched our business learn from them and watched them as a customer challenge us to continually be better. And so I think, I think we've taken away a lot of things from that. Um, a, another organization that, that a lot of our management team, including myself, have participated with is an organization called Strategic Coach. 
and, and through that coaching process, and that's kind of an international professional development and coaching organization, um, has helped us shape how we work as partners. You know, a fundamental goal is if you want a good partner, be one. And those type of things that we've taken away from, the, from that coaching, I think, is highly, highly in, invaluable. Um, and then I would say I, I, I more broadly lump in a number of our multi-generational private companies like a, like a Bruce Oakley that you've kind of watched how they've, how they've operated conservatively. They've protected their balance sheet. You know, we, we watch private equity around us buying up insurance agencies. You see a lot of those are extremely leveraged, seven to one eight to one debt to equity on some of these insurance agency backers. You know, when we wake up in central Iowa and we've got a one to one debt to equity ratio, that's a bad day. We run a conservative, well-founded business that's in it for the long haul. And I think we've learned, you know, being that Midwest values company that we're able to offer, you know, jobs for our employees and stability in our partnerships, whether it's with the Tenney Group or with customers for the, for the long haul. Well, listen, I appreciate uh, what you're doing over there, specifically around m and but, but I most appreciate how you guys are doing it. So thank you, Dan, for sharing your knowledge with our industry, with our network. Um, that's going to do it for us here in the hot seat. We'll see you next time.